I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome back to my channel. In case you missed it, go and check your comments that you left when you entered the 9,000 subscriber giveaway to see if you were the winner. It's actually Linda from Arkansas, but go check your, your content or your comments for my reply to see if it was you, Linda. <laughs> thank you. I thank you everyone for subscribing to the channel so that we could have 9,000 in our community and we could do a giveaway. We're gonna do another big giveaway at 10,000 subscribers, so please like and subscribe this video. But now we're gonna learn a Tunisian swatch. Um, so like and subscribe so that we can get to the 10,000 mark so we can do the next giveaway. It's gonna be even bigger than the six uh, book or door number two crochet conversation giveaway. Now I wanna do this one a little bit different. I talked about this one in a previous video. Um, it was entitled something like, what was I thinking? <laughs> or, or what am I thinking? And we decided that this Tunisian diagonal lace stitch looked better in um, solid than it did in multicolor. So we're going to learn this stitch today and then in another video I'll teach you how to uh, increase the stitch pattern. So if you remember or if you don't remember this stitch pattern comes from Darla Fanton's book 50 Tunisian Stitches published by Annie's and let me see if I can find the exact page for you guys. I'm not going to write out diagonal eyelet stitch on page 19, okay? So I'm not gonna write out her pattern because it belongs to her and not me, but I am gonna teach it. And one way I'm going to teach it is by starting in the middle and then we're gonna go back and start from the very beginning, okay? So anyway, I want to explain this pattern a little bit before we even begin. So it's really not hard, but because it's offset, like every row is different because you're moving the eyelet stitches over one every repeat so that you get that diagonal bias. So I learned while making this stitch um, some little tricks that I wanted to talk about before we even start. Here comes Theo. <laughs> okay, Theo, don't take my yarn. So the, tr the tricks that I learned are that, okay, it's a multiple of seven plus five, first of all. Now you're going to do Tunisian simple stitches for three. That's what makes the solid -y part. And then there's two eyelets. The two eyelets are actually yarn over and two together. So let's work on this row a little bit and I will hopefully be able to explain better what I mean. Oh, and here comes Muffin. Muffin might be joining us today. You guys haven't seen Muffin. Are you coming, Muff Muff? Maybe not. Okay, so with this pattern, as most Tunisian patterns, you don't work that first vertical bar because it's already on your hook. So when I am looking at this, if I don't wanna read a big block of text, I have figured out that the Tunisian simple stitches, there's always gonna be three of them together, one, two, three in a row, they have to end on the diagonal from the previous row. So this will be the third one, there's the second one, then the first one would be here. But I also need to do one there to help us move over. So I'm gonna do Tunisian simple until I can get over to these are the three that start the pattern. And as this beginning part gets bigger and bigger, I'm gonna measure or figure out where to start the pattern by where that first yarn over is. So the third one of the group always goes on that yarn over. Now let me show you the uh, fancy increase decrease eyelet stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, under go under two bars, as if to Tunisian simple stitch at the same time, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're just gonna chain one through just that first loop. So you're keeping that yarn over right there, okay? And then we begin the pattern of um, Tunisian simple, Tunisian simple. Remember the third Tunisian simple of the set goes in, in the yarn over. And then now we're in the heart or the body of the pattern um, and Theo is threatening to knock over all my yarn because that's what he does. So we're going to do two of those yarn over eyelets in a row. So to make the diagonal, they need to be here and then here. 
here, and then here, separated by three Tunisian simple stitches. So we just did the three Tunisian simple stitches. We're going to yarn over, insert under the next two bars. In this case, it also includes the yarn over. Yarn over and pull up one loop, then yarn over and pull through just one loop. So that's a chain. So it keeps that yarn over in place. So we decreased by taking two at one time, but we increased by adding the um, yarn over. So we took two and we made two, so we're still even. All right, Theo. Theo's playing with the papers on the desk. He's telling me, he's probably reminding me to, hey, look for the affiliate links in the description below. <laughs> Do your usual shopping. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps uh, helps me out. So thank you so much. And also he's reminding me to tell you that I believe crochet is a valuable, relaxing and valuable use of your time. Okay, back to the story here. So we're gonna do another one, yarn over, so that increases. We're gonna decrease by doing two simple stitches at the same time, and then yarn over and pull through one. So we increased with the yarn over, then we decreased by doing two at the same time. So we used two, but we made two, so we're all good, it's even. Now we will Tunisian simple stitch one, two, three, and the third one always ends up in a diagonal in the uh, yarn over from the previous row. And then we'll do the yarn over and then decrease here. Yarn over, uh, pull through those Tunisian simple stitches at the same time, and then just chain one through that one loop, not pulling through that yarn over. And we'll do that twice because we're in, when we're in the body of the pattern, we need an eyelet on either side of this diagonal here. Okay, do you see it? Okay, so we have, oh, here comes, here comes Muffin. I gotta show you Muffin. You guys haven't seen her in a while. Muffin, Muffin. This one here is Muffin. This one here is Theo. Muffin's gonna be with us for a while. So anyway, so sorry, I don't usually show you the pets, but you haven't really seen Muffin, so. Okay, so we're gonna remember Tunisian simple stitch for one, two, and the third one always uses the diagonal, okay? And then we're going to do the two yarn over once, yarn over and then do the decrease. And we'll do that yarn over decrease thing twice. And then when we come to the end of the row, we're going to continue the pattern as far as we can all the way across. So that means three Tunisian simple stitches. And then I really can't do a die, a, a, um, can I do one? I guess I could. Yarn over, do two together. I don't think that's going to work. Let's not do that. So in general, you're going to do the pattern as far over as you can and then just end up with Tunisian simple stitches. You'll always have the same number of stitches on your hooks because we're not really increasing. But the idea is because every row is different um, or it has a really big repeat of like, 12 rows or whatever, it gets confusing um, trying to read a big body of text. So it, by doing my method where you're just looking at the yarn overs and following the pattern, then you don't have to read the pattern. You know what I'm trying to say? So, and then the return pass is yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two all the way across. And then let me get you started on the, that now every row technically is the same, but it starts off set by one so that the diagonal happens. So there's really not a ton of memorization. It's almost easier if you can just read your stitches and not have to read the text. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to teach you to read your stitches first, and then we're gonna um, do the start of the next row, and then together, I will show you how to start from the extreme beginning. So if you like Tunisian crochet and you think crochet is a relaxing and valuable use of your time, please hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, so for the next row, again, if we just look at our stitches and we think, huh, I don't re remember where to start here. Remember that your third Tunisian simple stitch is going to end up on this 
yarn over right here. So that would be three, two, one. I know those all have to be Tunisian simple stitches. And then there should be a yarn over and decrease right here because there's two left over. So let's go ahead and start the next eyelet with yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch two together, and then chain one. Okay, so we have an eyelet that is starting the next new diagonal. Now we're gonna Tunisian simple stitch for one, two, three. The third one is always on that yarn over. And then we will do a yarn over decrease there, okay? So now we're going to do one, two, three. So if you're not sure where you're going, Find the next diagonal and, and count backwards for your Tunisian simple stitches, okay? Then we're gonna decrease twice to get a yarn over eyelet on either side. So that's yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch two together, and then chain one. And then we should do one, two, three, one, two. And then the third one is always on that diagonally um, yarn over there, and then yarn over and then two together. Remember, we're leaving all the loops on the hook because this is Tunisian crochet. Then we're doing it again because I, the eyelet happens on either side of this diagonal rib, okay? And Tunisian simple stitch for one, two, three. And the third one always happens on the yarn over yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch two together, chain one, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn, uh, chain one, and then we'll try to get as far over to the edge with the pattern as possible, one, two, three, and one. Okay, so that's um, the pattern. And now let me go back and show you from the extreme beginning. <laughs> so hopefully I got you hooked on this pattern and you can see that it's really, really not too difficult. If you do have the, uh, the book, that's awesome. If you need to find the book, I don't know if it's on Amazon still, but um, I have an Amazon link in my description below. It does not cost you extra money to use my Amazon link, but it does give me an affiliate uh, affiliate kickback, and I very much appreciate that. Every little bit helps. Okay, Muffin, Muffin. <laughs> muffin is getting in the game here. I needed to unravel a little bit. Let's see if she, oh, there she goes, jumping off the table. Okay, so this pattern is a multiple of seven plus five. So we're going to place a slip knot on our hook. This is a worsted weight yarn. I'm using Brava. This one was Karen Ogo. Um, and that was just one of the colors in the Ogo. So I have, I'm going to place multiples of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's two multiples plus five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is as wide as we're gonna make it this time. I think that one was closer to four repeats, um, the lavender. So we're gonna pull up a loop in the back ridge, back bump, back bar of each stitch across. So if we had two multiples of seven each, that's 14 plus five stitches for the extra five, that makes 19. So when I pull up one loop in the back ridge, back bar, back bump of every chain all the way across, plus the loop that was already on this, the hook when I began, there should be 19 loops on my hook. So I hope you can understand the math there. So as go as wide as you want to go, seven stitches with worsted weight yarn is about two and a half inches, maybe two inches, two and a quarter inches, and then add five more. So you can figure out if you wanted to do a baby blanket, for example, um, divide the math by two inches or so, and then that's how many repeats you need. So the number of repeats times seven, plus five. So let's see if we have 19 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Voila! I love it when math works out well. Otherwise, it's just not fun. Okay, so the very first row is just the traditional return pass, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook all the way across. Oop, actually pulled through three, so I had to back up, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. My favorite, favorite part of Tunisian crochet is the return pass especially when it's a traditional return pass, just like this, where it's nothing fancy. It's just yarn over and pull through two. It just feels like you make so much progress so fast until you have one loop remaining on the hook. So the first, um, excuse me, the first row, well, this is the foundation row. So the first uh, patterned row is, is row number two. We're skipping this first vertical bar because it's already on our hook. We're going to do three Tunisian simple stitches. One, two, three. Then we're going to yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch decrease, and chain one. Then we're gonna do that again. Yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch decrease, chain one. And then we'll go back to the three, one, two, three, Tunisian simple stitches. Okay? And then yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch decrease by going under the, the bar, two bars at the same time. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and just chain one, leaving that yarn over on the hook for later. Tunisian simple stitch in one, two, three. Okay, and then you're just going to Tunisian simple stitch the rest of the way across. Yep. Catching the last two of the vertical bars of that last stitch. That way it'll mirror exactly what it looks like on this side. It will look like that on this side. Okay, so and then we just return pass. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two all the way across. Theo is still on my table, but Muffin is running around, which is fine. She's still a kitten. She's just a, is it a little over a year old now? Yeah, year and a half, about a year and a half old. She's uh, Mara's cat and she's staying with us for a while while Mara is doing her thing, starting her life, studying abroad. Okay, so row two then, I'm sorry, we just did row two. Row three is then Tunisian simple stitch for just one, not the first one, because we always skip the first one. And we're going to remember how I taught you in the longer one, we're gonna do three Tunisian stitches and they're always gonna end on that yarn over. So that pattern starts right away here, one, two, three. So this one is just a placeholder until we can get over to that uh, group where we have our third one land on the yarn over. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch decrease with a chain one, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch decrease, chain one, and then three Tunisian simple stitches, one, two, and three. The last one ends on a diagonal yarn over there, and then the decrease. So the pattern is really very easy, but it's just a matter of really looking carefully and closely at your stitches, making sure that you are not increasing or decreasing. So when we had 19 loops on our hook to begin with, then we're gonna always have 19 every time we've completed a row before we return pass. And that will tell us that we are still on track. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So if you are concerned that you didn't do something or you have too few, you probably forgot to yarn over. Um, and if you have too many, then you may have put in an extra yarn over. So um, I hope that that demystifies and gets you excited about a more complicated Tunisian eyelet stitch pattern um, than maybe you've tried before. Really gorgeous. 
exceptionally beautiful in a solid. It looks like pearl bumps on the back because that's just the way Tunisian looks. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe button. And I hope you have a relaxing and valuable use of your day. And please leave a comment below if you don't mind. And that's all for today. I will see you on the next video. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ellen Gormley. I hope that you spent the last few minutes with a relaxing and valuable use of your crochet time. If you've not seen the last video, click up here if you've got a few more minutes. If you have seen it, here's another one I think you might really like. But everybody, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. See you next time.